Sup, and good day gamers, a formal bust here with a review of Kingdom Classic. But first, my sponsor, H2O, drink it up or die. Oh, delicious H2O, delicious. This game was released back in October of 2015. Uh, it was developed by Noi, that is N-O-I-O, -O. sorry if I butchered that, let me know if... Uh, you watch this, let me know how I pronounce that correctly, and I will be sure to do so in future. Uh, also developed by Licorice, I believe, is how you pronounce that one. I mean, it's spelled like Licorice, so it's Licorice I'm going to go with. And it was published by Raw Fury. Uh, it is available both through the video game's website, which is kingdomthegame.com, and also available through Steam and, I believe, cartridge.com. Uh, not entirely sure on that one. Uh, I could not get the web page to load for me. Uh, it is available on Windows, Mac, and Steam OS that I could find it. Uh, and yeah, that's all the uh, game info you need to know <laughs> for purchasing and all that. What is this game? Well, it's a nice pixel graphics game. It looks very nice for pixel graphics. A little even. Oh, look, man, look at that. Even got some hair graphics going on, man. Witcher 3 is jealous. Look, my frame rate isn't even dropping with that, with that hair hair graphics. Mm, man. Uh, enough joking out of the way. Yeah, overall, it looks very good. Uh, I do quite like the whole sound design and... Ooh, you got some rain coming. And just the setting of the game, the day-night cycle, and the kind of... I guess it's a river. There's just constantly water throughout the game. From end to end, there is water at the bottom of the screen. It's not an issue. I quite like it. And it reflects what all is going on above it. Very nice. But yeah, no. To me, the game really shines with its audio, uh, audio design. Y'all don't have no gold. Oh, here's some combat coming up. You do know combat. You watch your archers and your knights and your blacksmiths operating that catapult there do combat. So if if. <laughs> If shit goes sideways here, all you can do is run. Um, because the only thing, the only combat, like, interaction you have is if you get hit by an enemy as the ruler, the enemy will start to take your gold out of your coin purse. And if you have no gold in your coin purse, the enemy will knock the crown off of your head that I am wearing currently, and that is the end of the game. The enemy will then pick up the crown and, and also any gold that, you know, they get and return it to their portal. So they're kind of stealing, stealing from you, take, taking back to their portal universe, which, I, I mean, it's never explained. Not a lot of lore in this game is explained, but that's fine. It's a simple, minimalist game. No issue there. So what do you do since you can't do combat? Well, you hire peasants who are in these peasant camps to go back to your fortress. And when we get back to my fortress, we will show you what they do once they get there. And these, the one issue I have with this game, because you do need so many citizens eventually, the peasant camps only spawn two peasants a day. They do not spawn a lot of peasants each day, so you're limited in the amount of peasants you can hire as citizens a day. Ooh. Sorry, I do, I do, I do love, like I said, I love the audio design of this game, and it just, it surprises you at times. Uh, it's very... It's very cheerful, almost. Even the uh, kind of enemy combat music that appears sometimes isn't... It, it's never, like, dark and depressing. It, it's very upbeat still. You know, ominous, but upbeat. So yes, my peasants. They come back, and they pick up a bow. This guy picked up a bow because I had paid the merchant here to have a bow out ready for my peasant to come pick up. You can also pick up, uh, purchase scythes, and when your peasants pick up scythes, okay, here, he'll pick up a scythe, we'll see. Do, 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 get your scythe, buddy. And he gets a whole new little costume with a hat and everything with his scythe and a backpack. And he will come here, most likely, or to another farming area I have set up, where he will farm and produce gold and keep that gold with him until I am here. Your peasants can hold on to gold. I don't know if there's a limit to the amount of gold they can hold. Um, but it doesn't really matter, because if you get two peasants next to each other, and they spit out a ton of gold, you're probably going to fill up your coin purse. 
very quickly. You can also do hammers, which I have a couple blacksmiths here. They got overalls and hammers, little hats, quite nice. Uh, these banners up here are for my knights. You can only have two in either direction. But your knights will uh, pick up some uh, archers as well as their like bodyguards, so that's nice. That's all peasants can really do. Uh, this right here is just where you purchase catapult, uh, um, catapults, and you can only have one in either direction. That's fine. Archer towers uh, and walls while we're here. Walls and archer towers, there's four different levels total. Um, the first two levels of the archer tower really are just... I don't know if there's a difference in how effective they make the archers on top of them, but they only allow one archer on it. And I actually, yeah, this is the second level one. And this is just a little stone. You can only build archer towers where these distinctive stones are. And you can only build walls where there are little dirt mounds on the ground. So you're, you're limited to where you can build stuff. But once you build stuff there, it is permanent unless the walls get destroyed by the enemy. Uh, that's the only thing that gets destroyed by the enemy as well. I mean, your peasants can get picked off the towers by those flying enemies you saw earlier. But... You can only get, your walls are the only thing that can be destroyed, so that's quite nice. Oh yeah, the final level of uh, Archer Tower here gives you three. Second from the final level, the third level I guess, gives you two archers up there. And I also have these final level walls here, which are very nice. And there's some of the lowest ranking enemies. Yeah, your catapult. It's not the best, it's better for taking out just a bunch of enemies that are together at one time, but so is, you know, I guess I have, I'd say probably at least 40 archers here. And those are the flying enemies. They will pick up, I think, two, two of your citizens at a time and take them back to the portal. And your citizens, oh, thank y'all, thank y'all for the gold. I think that's way too much, but we'll see. Your archers will also, when it's not nighttime, kind of go out and hunt. There's nothing for them to hunt here, so they're not going to hunt a lot. And you are limited. This is just a, I call it a Freemason shrine. Kind of has a Freemason symbol in there. Don't know if that was an Easter egg or just a uh, historical thing. Because, you know, Freemasons in the past, you know, were needed because they were Freemasons. They knew masonry. Uh, but until you upgrade this thing, uh, it is wood. Same shape and everything. It's wood. It doesn't even need to be in your kingdom. Like here, this one's in the forest still. Not even as part of my kingdom. But. Until you upgrade it, you can only build the first two levels of walls and two levels... See there, they were able to hunt some elk. Two levels of walls and the first two levels of archer tower. So it is... That's one of the things in this game that like you need to upgrade. If not... I guess you could if you had enough archers and deal with it, but I would not want to go with that strategy. I'm going to go check out the left side of my kingdom. You, your kingdom can only expand in two directions, so... You got left and right, and I've expanded as far as I can on the left, and we'll see that in a second. Yeah, and your blacksmiths will build everything, um, although I don't really know what the priority is by the AI on the blacksmiths, but you can screw yourself over. Oh, gonna, this is a traveling merchant. When you pay him, he'll go back to your town with uh, either bows, hammers, or scythes. Uh, usually delivers four, so it's a good deal anytime you see him. Let's go all the way over here to the left. This is the final place I can put a wall. I could build an archer tower here, but since there's no wall I can build any further out. Yeah, this is the, st this is the end of the map. Giant black stone wall. Can't build past it. Enemies will still spawn there. Uh, from there, so that's why I don't want to build an archer tower here, because whatever archer was out here would get royally screwed over almost every night and it would just drain me of archers over time so it's not worth it okay I'm good and it's all randomly generated all of this uh, in either direction you're oh I need to upgrade this this is a shrine every day well not every day it, uh, you can give it five charge uh, uh, three charges of five gold and that will increase the I don't know if it increases the um, damage that your archers do, but to me it definitely does increase their uh, accuracy, which is sorely needed. And this is another shrine. This is six gold instead of five, and it can also take three charges. And that's for your blacksmiths, uh, sort of. It upgrades how quickly your blacksmiths... Ooh, we got a blood moon. Probably coming from the right direction. 
sorry, that shrine upgrades the uh, speed at which your blacksmiths will build stuff and also you get little plus marks on your walls, which I think, I'm not sure, uh, buffs them. I don't know why they would just, you know, be, be magically, you know, glowing with plus signs. So yeah, those shrines also, they're not probably not as necessary as the stone uh, masonry upgrade, but very helpful in the game. Um, and like I said, randomly they're randomly placed, just like everything else in this game. The only thing that I that is not randomly uh, placed is your fortress, uh, which just starts out as a you know fireplace. And also, I don't think the portals are fully randomized. I think they're more not limited, but kind of you know roughly the same area every time because uh, there's two on each side the, uh, of the enemy portals that spawn enemies uh, and so that's four total and they seem to be roughly the same areas uh, in all the times I've restarted. I think I had five or six restarts so far in this game uh, not this specific one because each time you restart you lose everything yep that's the enemy portal kind of hear ominous music coming from it. You don't want to get too close because sometimes enemies do spawn out of it during the day and will pretty much immediately, immediately kill you. Sorry, not kill you. They'll knock your crown off and take all your gold. Which, once you lose your crown, you're no longer a ruler and you can no longer rule your kingdom and the game starts over. So, that's the game over. But if you have gold and those small enemies hit you, you will lose your gold and they'll steal your gold, but you won't lose your crown. Although, bigger enemies will hit you, and you'll lose all your gold at once, which is no good. But yeah, this is the game. <laughs> uh, and your uh, ruler as well is also randomly generated. You can see this time I am a uh, dark-skinned uh, uh, female, it would appear, with a blue dress. Uh, oh no! I lost my two knights. Let's get them back. That can just happen sometimes. Um, enemies can launch, or not launch, I guess, but enemies can launch projectiles over your walls as well. The big guys can. Y'all have any golds? I need gold now. Mas I know I don't usually ask y'all for gold, but you got it. Okay. Uh, I'm not too worried about replenishing my knights. They're nice to have if the wall falls... Uh, they'll hold the enemy back for a little bit, but otherwise they're only used to send forth and attack the the uh, portals and destroy them. Yeah, this is the gameplay loop. You ride around your kingdom, you pick up gold, you deposit gold where it needs to be for your kingdom to continue thriving and existing. And that's it uh, before it gets nighttime. This portal... And these portals I've been going through here. Once you destroy the enemy portals, you will get access to... Oh, well, you get an option to build the portal. And what happens is, for a while, you pay one gold. You side-scroll, essentially, all, wherever you want to travel through that portal. Which you can pretty much travel one whole half of the map. So, like, from that portal back there, I could travel all the way back to my keep uh, normally. But, if you travel enough times through the portal uh, to a similar location, a little bit of residue will be left after you travel, and you can then pay to make that portal a two-way street permanently. Makes it very, very good for traveling around your kingdom. Uh, you can see I've used it to make going to the shrines a lot quicker. There's a portal by each one that goes to each one. Oh gosh, I do not need all of that gold, but thank you. Yeah, oh, Merchant is still headed into town. He takes a while to travel. But that's fine. Yeah. Very simple. Uh, One note of warning. If you're playing this game. Be careful how many archer towers you build. While they're very helpful at the edges of your um, civilization. Like if this wall were the end of my kingdom. And out there was forced still. Where enemies are coming from. Towers are very helpful. Especially at attacking uh, flying enemies. But if you don't have enough archers, or if you're, you know, losing archers over time through enemy killing them or taking their bows, you can get to a point where you don't have any archers at either side of your kingdom, 
to defend you, <laughs> which is an issue. And really, archers, like in medieval times, they're a lot more effective in numbers than they are, like, one or two at a time. Let me get some new knights. They don't know yet, but they'll be knights. But yeah, this is the gameplay loop. You're right around dispensing and collecting gold. And these peasant camps, unfortunately, only give you two peasants a day. So, not a ton, but enough. Just enough. Oh yeah, your horse's breath, when it gets like that, means your horse is about to run out of, I guess, stamina. But if you just stop and sit somewhere where there's grass on the floor, your horse will eat and immediately replenish its stamina. The only other way is to walk for a while, which is fine. Nice to get, ni ni nice to get, got, uh, ugh, to got. Nice to get option. There you go. Knight in shining armor. Although he doesn't get a horse. You're the only one in the game who gets a horse. Which does help keep you... You know... You don't get lost in the swarm of... Uh, NPCs that are around you. Uh, Day-night cycle is four minutes in total. You got uh, two minute long days, two minute long nights. Plenty, plenty of time to kind of, you know, just relax into the game. God, I love this music. I'm not sure how many um, individual tracks there are, but there's plenty. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yeah, you can kind of drop gold and they'll carry it, or archers and farmers will also produce gold. Archers through hunting, farmers through farming like he just did. And if you don't have enough room in your coin purse, you can lose the gold to, I guess, you know, the reflective water below. <laughs> There's actually, I believe, an achievement on Steam at the very least to uh, not drop a single, uh, not lose a single gold the entire game, which, ooh, good luck with that. Yeah, I don't have any complaints. The game runs fine for me. I've been at 60 FPS the entire time I've been uh, recording this review, and pretty much the entire time I've been playing the game, and I've, you know, remembered to look at the FPS counter, it's remained at 60, so that's been nice. No issues with the running. I do the only like quality of life uh, improvements I would have for the game is I'd really like to be able to zoom out more. Um, this is the furthest zoom you can get. I mean, there is no zoom in or zoom uh, out or whatever. There is in the options. There is a. It's a very simple options menu. I mean, the menu is very simple. Continue, new game, options, credits, save, save and quit. Options, very simple. Full screen and bordered windowed mode. There is an option for zoom. It does nothing for me. It is stuck on 3x. I cannot go up. I cannot go down. Do not know why. Also, plenty of different languages in the game. Not, you know, every language humans speak, but more than some games. If you're interested in this, I would suggest you check it out. It is free to play. No charge whatsoever. Just, you know. And you can probably run this on a very low-end machine. Uh, I have not benchmarked it on anything other than my PC. But I would not be surprised if this ran just fine on, like, say, you know, off-the-shelf gaming. Uh, uh, not, not even gaming, just off-the-shelf, you know, laptop. So, yeah. Check it out if you want to. I would suggest you check it out. Worst case scenario, you download it and you don't enjoy it and you, you know, delete it. It's free to play. And if you are interested in other games like it, there are two other games that are mostly the same game. I don't know if they're mostly the same game, honestly. I do know that they are made by the... I don't think they're pu uh, developed by the same people, but they are published by Raw Fury. Uh, I don't think they're exact sequels, uh, but... There is Kingdom New Lands, and there is also Kingdom Two Crowns. Uh, New Lands, I think, just changes up the different types of like biomes you can inhabit, or your king your kingdom can inhabit. And Two Crowns, uh, I watched the trailer, and it, I know it does add multiplayer. Like you can play, you can have two rulers playing at the same time. And also, I think it gives you a second chance if you're playing solo to continue your kingdom, which is pretty nice. 
there's been a couple times where I mean for the most part if your wall if your outer wall falls and a ton of your peasants get killed you probably want to start over your full kingdom anyway because that means a lot of walls have been destroyed you've lost a lot of peasants which is very hard to recoup peasants is the hardest resource in the game to keep up with if you lose you know more than four peasants that's going to be a couple you know at least a day but you do have a chance to when your peasants fall in combat uh the enemy will take their like item like if they were to kill this guy they would take his scythe his scythe would fall to the ground the enemy would take his scythe and run away so that's one enemy but if another enemy came up to him and attacked him he would lose one gold and that one gold which you initially invested in him to make him not a you know groveling peasant in the forest that one gold would be taken back to the gate as well and he would become another groveling peasant and he would slowly make his way back to the forest which over here would be the you know to the right direction and if you get to him in time you can pay him one gold to get him to come back as you can with anyone who would fall in combat but that's you know if you're on one side of your kingdom you lose that you know this wall falls and you don't even know and that can be a big issue if you lose a ton of peasants or citizens at one point very hard to recoup I don't think I have much more to say overall my opinions of this game it's a very nice game the gameplay loop is short enough to where you could you know play it on a you know very short time frame you know four minutes I mean really the gameplay loop can be whatever you want because it is a save and quit whenever you want but it, I it kind of encourages you at least play for the full day so you know you're aware of what all you've done in the day there's been times where I've saved and quit in the middle of the day and have, you know, been like, oh, did I do the shrines today? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I just loaded into the game. It's midday. I don't know if I took care of my shrines today or not. Stuff like that is uh, better served by you staying, you know, in the game for at least one day cycle. Which, only two minutes per day, two minutes per night. And I'm going to take my portal back. Yeah, I definitely need to pay my portal. My <laughs> Pay my portals. Definitely need to pay my shrines because they're at one charge it looks like but yeah beautiful game a, a, a very well done music soundtrack i love it and you actually can get the soundtrack at least on steam separately from the game which funnily enough the uh, soundtrack for this game costs money whereas you know the soundtrack is free if you have the game you know it's in the game files although i would suggest supporting the actual musicians because i believe that is why it costs money Well, I'm going to leave it here, gamers. Uh, I believe I've said all my thoughts on this. I don't have any more to say. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And feel free to check out Kingdom Classic. I have been a formal bust. And until next time, take care of yourselves, gamers, and drink some H2O.